Absorb that f***ing candy bar, Commander Keen. Yeah, you get in there. You get it. You get it. Wait, what's that? Oh, dang. Hi. Ah, hey. Hi. Every hey. Everyone, here's, um, here's, uh, the... Here's some news. Uh, yep. And it's, um, it's still just coronavirus. Everything is coronavirus all the time until forever. Until it's over. Which seems pretty, you know... TBD right now. Anyway, can I switch back to my DOS emulator? Or do we have to sit here and pretend like time and life and things matter? I just downloaded Police Quest and I'm gonna lose on purpose. It's gonna be great. Um, okay, it's a bad start. That's clear to me. I'm just, I don't know if you know this, but I, um, I hate this coronavirus. I hate it a lot. Like, like, sure, everyone is entitled to their own opinions, and I wouldn't want to influence people either way, but personally, I am not pro-virus. Anti. That's me all the way, baby. We should make buttons or something. Big ol' like, I not like virus buttons that we can sell. The proceeds go to, to nothing. Just burn the money. And like... I can't even just start a video anymore. I gotta do some ungodly bid about dealing with a bunch of sinister microbes every damn week. Or whenever we release a video, it's not my department, or maybe it is, I don't know, I'm kind of like in and out. But nothing really changes much when you're stuck at home, you know? I mean, sure, you can light a couple of fires or wear a sexy wig or whatever you wanna do to shake things up. But that is but a band-aid on the sunken gash of monotony. Monotony being the absolute worst thing about this crisis. You know, like besides dying from a virus during a pandemic or working essential jobs during a pandemic or losing your non-essential job during a pandemic or, you know, also bores. So it goes bores then getting murdered by a virus and a bunch of struggles related to pandemics. Then monotony. Then I guess Trump. And under that... I think cheese has been left out is pretty gross. So mold in general, I guess. But then some molds are good. Penicillin, you know. So, okay, that's the order. Penicillin's at the bottom. Now, I can't really help with the boars or the virus or the other things, but today I figured we'd at least break through the constantly thinking about coronavirus with news stories so that have little to zero connection with the coronavirus. It's a segment I'm deciding to call coronavirus, more like coroldivirus, or maybe a corboredom virus. No coronavirus. Go Rona right out of here, virus. That's the one. That's the one. I should have gone with that. But it's too late. It's not like we write these things ahead of time. But no more. No more. Shall we speak its name in the episode? It's time to move on to the bigger, better news we used to enjoy. Ah. Forgot. It's... It's always been terrible. Hey, Canada. My deepest condolences, and I hope you're all doing okay. Um, not to make it always about us, but I'm guessing you're a little less numb to these things in America. What with all the, the laws you have and the, the, the less gun violence. Oh, oh, I guess not, actually. Apparently, you also have a problem up there. Even with your precious gun laws. Take that, you liberal... Um, say again. Smuggling them from the United States. That checks out, okay. Well, we are, after all, a festering gut shot on the continent. Huh? I'm, I'm doing okay, thanks. You know, just getting through each day, keeping busy. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, kn I know, I know. I, I can't really, I'm, I'm doing it right now. Everyone is watching me, so. Okay, that's great. Listen, I, j I have to go and I, 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 I will. Okay, thank you, I know, I love you too. This is really great. Okay, thank you, mom, goodbye. Sorry about that. I mean, you know how it is. Doing bits for no good reason in this segment about terrible gun violence where, like, my mom also gives me news updates. Wasn't it like an ear spider last week? All right, hey. On this same awful subject, something you might have also missed is, uh, remember that racist spree shooter who, like, you know, probably, like, loved 8chan and was radicalized online and had beliefs that aligned with a lot of conservative talking points? No, not that one. Not that one either. No, not him. Ah! It's too far back. No, not that one. Not that one. Keep going. Not that one. No. No, not that. Wait, wait, wait. Go back. 
That's the one. Well, just last March, he changed his court plea to guilty in what was seen as an unexpected turn of events, which will likely result in a life sentence in prison. I wonder if he realized that he wasted his life doing irreversible and unforgivable things because a bunch of dummies on the internet don't understand that the natural evolution of a multicultural world isn't some kind of white genocide. Like, if your big conspiracy theory is that we're getting less white people because of a gradual intermingling with other races and cultures, and over time might naturally assimilate with them because we all get along and like f***ing each other, then I don't know, maybe... Maybe look into the chemtrails or something because your conspiracy hobby sucks. Massive demographic changes have been foisted upon the American people. And they're changes that none of us ever voted for and most of us don't like. From Virginia to California, we see stark examples of how radically, in some ways, the country has changed. What the f are you talking about, Laura? Are you complaining that we didn't get to vote on which races exist in our country? Is that a thing you wanna be able to do? Anyway, thanks for injecting white genocide theories that have caused very real acts of violence into your mainstream news program. That's great. Great work, you Nazi mannequin. What am I even talking about? Mass shootings, that's right. Mm, yeah, really feels good to get back to normal news again. Anyway, on the bright side, the month of March was the first March without a school shooting since 2002, which is great news. Or, it's kind of great news. Or, it's, not, it's not like really good news because there's no school shootings because schools are closed because of the corona. No, no, ha. Can't trick me into saying it. Not gonna say it. Nice try, news, you old curse on my brain, draining my life essence as you watch and jack off. Oh, also, that story about March being the first non-shooting March only counts if you ignored this shooting, this shooting, this shooting, this shooting, this shooting, this shooting, and this, um, shooting. So, no, that story, which was reported by major news networks, is not true and can be debunked easily by a Snopes intern googling the words gun plus school plus March. Holy Christ, you guys, this has been a special segment called That good news you heard that wasn't very good to begin with is actually false and therefore not even in the ballpark of good news and is in fact bad news. You're welcome. All right, so we're nice and warmed up with shootings. Let's just get all the shitty stuff out of the way. And you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and apologize right now. This one isn't exactly going to be a blast. Rarely do we get to see the headline, everyone's pretty fine right now, enjoy the day. So when we're already so stressed out about what's happening in the world, adding more news to that isn't always helpful. But also it's like, in the name of the show. I don't know what you thought you were going to get. But if it makes you feel any better, it may be comforting to remember that no, this current pandemic that shall not be named, it's not going to kill us after all. It's climate change that's going to do that. You are thinking of climate change. Checking in with the thing that will actually kill us once this other thing is over. Aw, oh, yeah! Strap in, folks! Really, you should hold on to something because there are f***ing tornadoes everywhere. Super not great that this spittle spread pandemic is happening right at a time where a large population survival dependency is tied to huddling together with strangers in a closed off bunker. But, to be fair and balanced, TM, GH7, Medical Droid from Revenge of the Sith, the science isn't actually all that clear about how climate change is affecting tornadoes. But that's mostly because, have you tried to study a tornado? You gotta make a whole big canister filled with little sensors and then somehow deploy those into the funnel or suck zone, as the experts call it. And like, maybe it's too light and you can't get it in there, so you have to strap it onto like your truck and then your fiance realizes you still have feelings for your ex-wife and leaves you, but she's also okay with it, I guess, because she wasn't really that well-developed of a character to begin with, and man, watch out for those hubcaps. So it's complicated, but Tornado patterns are changing and gradually shifting to less expected and more populated areas of the US. And it's a, you know, pretty good guess that it's climate change related. And while the East Coast is going to have an excess of water flying every which way, the West Coast is gonna have, um, not that. Thanks to definitely climate change, a newly released study has analyzed 1,200 year old tree rings to conclude that the 2000 to 2019 drought was the second driest 19 year period since 800 CE. 
and fits the pattern of a continuing drought, as in a future of more and more terrible droughts comparable to prehistoric times, but now worse because of climate change. Man, all, of all the things we could have brought back from 800 CE, we chose dry weather? We could have had like Charlemagne or something, given him his own Fox News show. He'd do great yelling about the Saxons and people saying happy holidays. Anyway, maybe start saving water is my point, I think. Or like, let's make having water be a right. Apparently medicine is too expensive, but surely we could decide to do water. Anyway, the earth is trying to kill us. Pretty cool stuff. I mean, we started it, sure. And by God, we're gonna end it. Starting with killing off the insects, apparently. Because an also recent analysis gathering 166 other long-term studies just concluded that the insect population has dropped almost 25% thanks to pollution and pesticides and all the other awesome stuff we do. But hey, I'm sure we don't need insects and getting rid of them won't cause some kind of catastrophic result that I'm not going to Google or anything like that. And if it makes you feel better, there are parts of the world that have too much of the insects. Like in Somalia, where they are currently dealing with a locust swarm. Super fun, not at all an omen or anything like that. So which is it? Lamestream media, are there not enough insects or too many insects? Get your facts straight. Oh, and the Great Barrier Reef is getting bleached again this year because maybe it heard the president said that can cure viruses, huh? Zing. Guys, I think I might be depressed. This is... Real banger of a start for our news you missed video. But you know, I did apologize, so it's kind of your fault at this point. And frankly, I'm not sure I'll be able to forgive or fully trust you. <sighs> okay, well, we're warmed up from our last warm up in that our internal temperature is gradually rising. Like the planet's temperature. Might as well switch over to politics in our ongoing segment, The Politics Hovel 2020 Edition classic segment graphic, just like old times. So what's new in the world of politicking? Right, right, right. So darn, um, Bernie suspended his campaign, all official like, endorsed Joe. And that's, 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 a, you, you know. Bernie, uh, as Jill and I told you and Jane, we're deeply grateful to both of you. We have, uh, you, you, you've put the interest of this nation and the need to beat Donald Trump above all else. And for that, Jill and I are grateful. You know, it's, it's, it's rough, but, um, but, but we thank him. You know, thank you, Bernie. You're a, a good man. And you're, you changed the party. And like, your ideas were good, actually, is what we're now saying after you've, you've suspended your campaign. Like, like, it's a shame, you know, how your campaign failed because of things you did and not like, the media comparing you to Hitler or a coordinated effort by the democratic establishment or any anything like that. Anyway, thanks. Thanks. Thanks, bud. Um, everything you said was right, but also we're not going to go with you or anything you said, but Hey, at least the guy we are going with is going to say that thing you say, uh, healthcare is a human right while not actually believing it because the public option, if anything, just gives people the right to pay for healthcare. And if you believe something is a right, you don't use a bunch of opposition talking points to imply you'd veto it. You know, like, like if I thought voting was a right, I wouldn't propose a law that lets you vote if you can pay for it, you know? Anyway, big sigh, staring off into the distance, a single tear, then a sore throat and cough, followed by hours of Googling and panic attacks because you don't have health insurance. Anywho, Obama and Warren did it too. Gore stopped by, that's great. Thanks, Gore. Glad, glad all these f***ers found the time to weigh in after the fact. I'm glad, glad Elizabeth Warren went utterly silent until there was no other option and then squeezed out an endorsement for the guy she said this about. Nominating a man who says we do not need any fundamental change in this country will not meet this moment. <laughs> and nominating someone who wants to restore the world before Donald Trump, when the status quo has been leaving more and more people behind for decades, is a big risk for our party and for our country. I don't know, man, I guess I, he's doing good in the polls. People hate Trump, he sucks. So like, you know, I'm, I'm fully aware that I can't just keep talking about this until the sun explodes. But the whole, 
well, you lost. Now you got to fully support Biden and pretend he's amazing and not criticize him or else you like Trump. Kind of makes me feel like I've been stuffed in your trunk and made to choose between having my arms and legs removed or my head chopped off. Like, obviously, one is better than the other one. But like, neither is ideal and everyone knows it. And it's kind of embarrassing to see everyone so instantly pretend like that isn't true and give him advice that boils down to be more like Bernie, pretend to have Bernie's ideas. Instead of using an incredibly unpopular president to push a candidate with actual bold ideas, Democrats saw an opportunity to squeak in mediocrity. And that's, that is pretty depressing, especially during a pandemic when we're finally talking about necessities like housing and health care. And anyway, I guess we're going to go with the one that doesn't tell you to drink poison. So that's good, even though his campaign did tell you to vote during a pandemic. But no more pandemic talk today. All right. I'm sure we'll have a really fun video in the future about Joe Biden. But in the meantime... Since we're already talking about our big boy pants president, one piece of news that might have passed you by is that Donald Trump, president of big boy pants, has so far amassed $1.82 million in debt to states from his campaign rallies. States that are now dealing with a pandemic and could probably use that money, perhaps, and are now starting to sue him for it. It's just one of the many things that 10 years ago would have mattered as opposed to being another footnote in the big book of dull brain pains. Trump also ordered the Navy to shoot down Iranian ships if they quote, harass our ships at sea. Not in danger, mind you, but just like, bug us. It's actually a technique they've been doing by sailing close to our ships and veering away or blasting their horns or loudspeakers. And yeah, in fairness, that does sound pretty annoying. So I guess we'll um, start a war over it. Sorry, um, continue a war. Of course, this was just a tweet from our president and US warships have always had the ability to take measures if they actually feel like they're in danger. As noted by the Navy, when they first reported the harassment saying, quote, US naval forces continue to remain vigilant and are trained to act in a professional manner while our commanding officers retain the inherent right to act in self-defense. So basically, the Navy was like, hey, these guys are being dicks, but we're keeping our cool and could, if we wanted to, blow them out of the water. And then Trump was all like, hey, you know, you can blow them out of the water. You have my permission. And presumably, the Navy then thought, yeah, no sh we just said that dingus, but we're f***ing professionals, so we're not gonna just kill people, you weirdly shaped gourd. Now stop tweeting before you start a bigger war. And I guess, um... That's the story. Speaking of that guy I'm talking about who is the president, a new bipartisan Senate report was released that once again confirmed for the 20th time that yes, Russia did indeed interfere with the 2016 election in favor of Donald Trump. Because apparently we have to double, triple check this like someone convinced they left their oven on. Here's the report. If you feel like reading something you already know, what makes this one particularly hilarious is that it was led by Republicans and aimed specifically at assessing the other assessments, presumably looking for evidence of a hoax by the deep state, and instead just confirming the thing even more. It found no trace of bias from the intelligence community, nor evidence that any of the Russia investigation was dependent on or even involved the dubious Steele dossier. So just, all the things we already knew and were saying. Now released during a time when America couldn't be more distracted long after the fact. But hey, don't you feel great now that you're not thinking about a pandemic a moment ago, except for right now when I brought it up? Mmm, yeah, breathe that fresh air, but maybe don't breathe too much of it because it might kill you. Ha ha. And also, don't you even try to breathe out near me. You hold that lung trash in. And in other news about corrosive threats to the existence of humankind, Lindsey Graham and Mitch McConnell are up for re-election this year. And they might, maybe, could be, possibly lose. It's slim, because red states and all, but both Mitchie and the Lynchies are actually being outdone in fundraising by their opponents. Two people I know nothing about besides the fact that they are not Mitch McConnell or Lindsey Graham, which is apparently the prime selling point for a lot of politicians these days. Now, 
we super have every right to be pessimistic about this. And Kentucky has already reinforced their voter suppression by requiring photo IDs to vote. Something that happens to be impossible at the moment because the office that gives IDs is closed because of the quarantine. And gee, I, I wonder if that was the idea all along. How odd. How odd. Odd, so odd, such a puzzle how conservatives are railing against things like voting by mail and the postal service in general and all the other things that help the lower class organize and vote. Odd, mysterious, evil stuff. But also, despite Wisconsin also pulling the same voter ID hogwash and all the virus related obstacles, Democrat Jill Karofsky was able to win the state Supreme Court position in the last election, booting the conservative judge they had in place despite no one expecting her to do it. So I don't know. A little huzzah for ya, you know? Maybe no amount of dirty techniques can save someone if the people are fed up enough, and we should feel at least a little hope about that. You know, we're, we're allowed a little bit of hope. It certainly can't be all bad catching up on the news. Sometimes it's good, or at least not the worst, or something even super weird. So let's fist around in the old news bag and see what other weird, not good, but not the worst news we can cut our hands on. Just a bunch of random, weird, not too bad, but not great stuff. Hey, neat, a radioactive rubble fire. That's marginally better than talking about American politics. Like, sure, our Halloween candy still has needles inside of it, but at least it's a Milky Way instead of some boring razor-filled apple or wax lips, am I right? Just nod at the screen. The fire has since been declared under control after being started intentionally by a dickhead. I mean, yes, I have also pondered if the fire could kill the radioactive boars. Like, of course I've pondered that. But if you Google, are boars resistant to fire? There's nothing that confirms or denies it. So why take the chance of having a bunch of firebending swine blasting around like a damn army of feral Johnny Storms? You know, come on, man. It's, it's basic logic and facts. Okay, let's do another spin on the news wheel we've definitely been using this whole episode. Ah, oh, yeah, eat me raw, space crimes. Did you know there's not one, but two space scandals happening right now. Just last year, we got the very first allegation of a crime committed in outer space, a first ever space crime. It was against astronaut Anne McLean, whose wife accused her of committing identity theft while she was on the space station, only to be charged with the crime herself when it turned out she was lying about the whole thing. It was a space frame job. And I'm no space historian, but that doesn't seem like a common occurrence. I and mean, sure, you could argue that it's not as cool as an actual space crime, but let's take the win, you know? Let's enjoy the riveting space drama of twists and turns. And at least any aspiring space criminals out there can breathe easy knowing that there's still a chance that they can be the first. So the space crime race continues. Who will it be? My money's on Christopher J. Cassidy. He looks shifty as fuck. Also in space crime news, Elon Musk's SpaceX has been accused of price dumping by Russia, meaning that they're allegedly undercharging commercial launches while overcharging NASA to make up for it, effectively pushing everyone else out of the market because we, um, privatized space, which I'm sure will work out just great. We're doing a lot of space stuff, actually. The aforementioned SpaceX just launched a turd bunch of satellites that they hope to use for a global internet network that they will then charge people to use because again, privatizing space. We're compiling a futuristic satellite array in the vast reaches of the unknown so we can do Comcast stuff, but higher up, higher like weed. Anyway, it's not all space greed in the news because the Mars rover just totally found organic molecules on Mars that could, but only maybe, indicate evidence of past life on the planet. So that's cool. Space is cool, you guys. It's like regular things, but in space, making it cooler than regular things. And at least we have that. And no one can take that away from us. God damn it. Coronavirus, you, you piece of shit. You fucking asshole piece of shit. Okay.
Maybe it's not possible to discuss the news of the world without also discussing the biggest thing that's happening, which also happens to be completely reshaping the way we do business, interact with each other, and think about politics, and do space crimes. It's like this big destructive force just landed on our laps, disproportionately affected lower classes, and caused the wealthy to assure us all we're overreacting because it doesn't actually affect them. And now it's hard to think about anything else because of how absurd it all is, like some kind of clownish nightmare where you're gang stabbed by talking confetti. So everyone feels obligated to run stories you might have missed pieces and try to normalize the situation as best they can. And like, the problem is that you can try to have as many new takes as you can about it, but ultimately, the only thing you can say is that we need to try and get rid of this thing and provide for each other and like, maybe change society in significant ways. Even though there are very dumb people actively fighting that, despite that being an act of their own self-destruction. So it's not like, um, it's not like anything else we've had to deal with as of recent. It's a, it's a totally new thing, having the upper class tell us to calm down and the media try to normalize it and people stupidly protesting against progress. You know, it's, 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 it's a totally new experience for us. And I guess, I guess that's it for news you might have missed. I think I covered just about everything. Uh, oh, real quick. Also, the oil industry is collapsing and no one saw it coming and a bunch of companies will go bankrupt and it'll likely devastate entire economies and change the world as we know it. So I could have done an entire episode about that. Or how when the president brought up disinfectant and definitely suggested we test injecting it into people, he said he wasn't talking to the woman he addressed by name. And half the country said, he didn't say the thing he said. And the other half of the country said, this, 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 this is the thing that will make people turn around on Trump. And surprise, they're both wrong. And, 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 and again, it's an, it's an entirely new experience. I probably could have done an episode about that too, but, um... You know, I don't like to look at these purple clams. Suspicious clams, if you ask me. Hi. Episode over. Thanks, watch. Click, subscribe, like, comment, podcast, even more news, Patreon, website. Thank you. Good. Bye.